When and why should you be switching your Manjaro GLP-1 injection site? That is the topic for today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for another video today. If you are new here, my name is Brittany and I have lost 85 pounds on Manjaro over the course of the past almost two years and I am currently in a maintenance journey. So if that interests you, I would love to have you subscribe, give this video a like, stick around, introduce yourself in the comment section. I would love to have you here. Um, I have an entire playlist starting back from the very beginning of my Manjaro journey, like literally week one, um, that you can go back and watch and see how my, my journey has progressed over the course of the past almost two years. It'll be two years in November. Um, but yeah, so today we are talking about injection sites and when and why you should be rotating them, switching them up, all of the above. So I've actually like broken this video down into three different sections. So we are going to be talking about the why, the when, and the how. And I figured by breaking it down in those three sections, we can get to an actual plan on how to do it and a really good rotation schedule that I've come up with that I personally use that I think is very useful as well. As always, I'm not a doctor or a healthcare professional, um, I'm especially not your healthcare professional. Um, so always talk to your doctor before doing any major changes to your medication process. Um, but okay, so reasons that you may want to change where you are injecting. A lot of these are pretty like self-explanatory. First off, it can reduce skin irritation. If you're injecting consistently over time into the same area, um, you're more likely to get irritation or some type of site reaction in that area. It also increases the risk of a skin infection from repeatedly piercing the same, say your thigh, the same spot over and over and over again then you're more likely to, whereas if you're going in different areas and you're not um, exposing the same skin area to a needle multiple times in a row, whatever, you're less likely to develop a skin infection. So skin irritation, skin infection are kind of the more like practical reasons why you would want to rotate your, um, your site regularly. But many, many, many people, like thousands and thousands of people have reported online and to their doctors that when they switch up their site, they actually notice a increase in the effectiveness of the medication. This isn't scientific because, I mean, really, if we're thinking about it scientifically, no matter where you inject, the injection, if it's in sub-Q tissue, subcutaneous tissue, then it should absorb it in the same way if it's being injected into the fat cells. So scientifically, maybe it doesn't really make sense. However, thousands and thousands of people just cannot be wrong in my opinion. And my personal opinion, um, again, this is just an opinion, um, is that it is because when you inject in the same spot over and over and over again, you are breaking down tissue there. You are um, continuously exposing that tissue to a foreign body or a foreign thing. And so your tissue may build, your tissue may change, the composition of that tissue, the fat cells may change, and um, you may end up, that's like why uh, people who inject um, testosterone or Clomid, if they're doing IVF treatments or whatever, um, can develop like a skin toughness because if you're injecting the same spot over and over again, have you ever seen people, this is a good example, people who um, are diabetics, which a lot of, some of you may be, or people who just have, have to test their blood sugar often, they will test their finger. And over time, if you look at the skin on the fingers that they use regularly, they're rough and tough and thick. And um, eventually they have to switch fingers because they just can't even pierce that finger anymore. It's the same type of thought process, I think. And so um, if you're damaging fat cells over and over and over again, then the absorption rate may not be as good. Again, not scientifically speaking, Brittany's, ba Brittany's brain thinking is what we're talking here. So when should you, as in how often should you be rotating your injection sites? Now, if you've been on the same injection site, I would say for longer than like six weeks, then it's probably a good idea to switch your site. And by six weeks, I mean, say you're on your legs, one here, you're like, we're rotating. You should absolutely hands down, even if you're not rotating like 
body parts, you should be rotating between one thigh and the other or one side of your stomach and the other. Um, so when I say six weeks, I mean one thigh, one thigh, one thigh, one thigh, one thigh, one thigh. So each thigh would have gotten three weeks. If you're doing six weeks in the same thigh continuously, you got you change it up friend like that's just way too much um for one spot and some people i i've known that like literally never change their spot um and that is recommended in the pamphlet that you at least alternate between your legs so that is like bare minimum that you need to be doing but if you've been on the same say so you've been on the same body part your thighs for six weeks then it's probably a good idea to rotate through and give one of the other body parts a try um most often people will notice that the medicine starts to become a little bit less effective. Um, for me personally, if I'm not keeping track of it, one way that I know is that I do have increased hunger. Um, so if I start to notice a little bit of more hunger um, or even less side effects, like I'm not feeling the medicine as much, then I'll start to wonder if it is time for me to go ahead and switch up my injection site. Um, I think that is, if we really like listen to our brains, then our brains will tell us. Um, some people, I do want to mention this, some people will say at this point, they'll be like, oh, okay, well now it's time to increase my dose, to go up in dosage. And I do want to say that I 100% trust me from experience would recommend switching your injection site. So again, if you're doing your legs, trying your arms, because, um, it could just be that, like it could just be that you need to switch something up, not necessarily that you need to go up in dosage because going up in dosage before you truly need to go up in dosage, let me tell you, you can avoid a whole host of unnecessary side effects if you wait to titrate up until your body really needs to titrate up. No titration cycle is going to be the same 100% for everybody. Um, and so making sure that you kind of click all the check boxes before moving up in dosage will significantly reduce your side effects when you jump in dosage because that is when they tend to kick back in is when you do increase in dosage. So I would definitely try that. If you're thinking of going up in dosage, try switching up your body part, your injection site before you do that. I promise it's worth the extra like week, two weeks to make sure that you really need to titrate up. I promise. Um, if you know, you know, 10 milligrams, your girl almost died. Like I was not here for it and almost quit. And I wish that some of the stuff that I tell you guys now that I have learned after the fact, I would have known at the point when I was lower or, or more earlier on in my journey. So I love to share them with you so that you don't make the same mistakes that, that me here made because me here that I made because, uh, it was a rough time at 10 milligrams for me. So a rotation schedule. This is the one that I personally use. And so this is the one that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. You don't have to use my rotation cycle. You could come up with one in your brain as long as you're like giving reasonable amount of time to different body parts. That's really all that matters. But the one that I use that I have found to be super helpful and easy to keep track of and remember is a six week cycle. So um, the body parts that I use are my thighs, my stomach, and the back of my arms, which are the most common ones, which is why I use them, which is why I'm sharing them with you. So for example, say we're on our thighs, you do six weeks on your thighs, three in each one. So we are rotating within the rotation cycle. So we're still rotating body parts. And then after six weeks, we move to another body part. So three in each thigh, then we move to our stomach. And I always go bottom to top. I don't jump around from like, you know, thigh to arm to stomach. Keeping it in a straight linear line for me is a lot more um, easy for me to remember like where I'm at in the cycle. But so six weeks on your thighs, six weeks on your... I had to get up and uh, I'm sitting in front of my patio door and Max is outside this little friend here. And he like took off running on his lead to the other side. And I was like, oh my God, he's going to snap his lead. So I had to like jump up and let him in. But anyways, six weeks on your thighs, six weeks on your stomach, and then six weeks on your arm. Again, rotating within the rotation cycle. So three and three, three and three, three and three. And then you move, you start the cycle back over and you move back to your thighs. This gives each body part 12 weeks between 
that body part. So 12 weeks to recover, 12 weeks for the tissue to process, 12 weeks for new cells to be developed, 12 weeks for cells to heal. Um, so that is a good like rotation schedule, a good amount of time for your body's parts to adjust and kind of get back to normal before you do it again. Therefore, making the medicine hopefully more effective for you and the absorption rate better for you. Again, that's the, the rotation schedule that I personally use, one that I would highly recommend um, because 12 weeks off, I mean, that's three months between each spot. And um, yeah, now there are people who report that they have a better um, reaction to the medicine in different parts of your body. So like, for example, my sister will not inject in her stomach. She just won't do it because she says that her side effects are absolutely awful. So if you are one of those people, you just could eliminate your bad body part, right? I mean, it's not down to a specific science you have to follow it so say you are somebody who cannot do their stomach like the side effects are just so awful then just do your thighs and the back of your arms you're still giving your thighs or your arms whatever body part you're not using you're still giving it six weeks off between the times that you're not on it and the week in between when you're alternating between your arms or your thighs or whatever. So yeah, I hope that this helps you. I hope this answers some more questions about site rotation. Um, I have been getting, that's actually something that I get asked a lot, a lot is when to know when it's time to change your site up. If a specific body part works better than others, I think that that question can be answered by you personally. The only way that you're gonna know if one body part works better for you is if you try all of the body parts. For me personally, my thigh was like my go-to for months and months and months and months. I would have to force myself to switch, to rotate. Um, and then once I actually started doing my stomach, I liked that better. So throughout different parts of my journey, different body parts work differently. And like, I think, again, that's just a personal thing that each person has to figure out. Oh, I still got my voted sticker on. Look at me voting. Um, I went by there this morning and um, there was literally no line. So I, I took it upon myself to go ahead and get that done. Uh, so yeah, don't forget to vote as well. This isn't a, I'm not super political, but don't, that's literally your right. So don't forget to exercise your right to vote. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, you, I'm not sure if you guys will see this one on Wednesday or Tuesday, but I'm filming another one today. So you will see me in the same thing. Uh, gotta do the filming when your girl can get it in. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one where we are going to be talking about more things that I have learned through trial and error since being on uh, Mandara, which actually you might have already seen that one. You know, you know how it goes. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you soon. Bye.